Hello, welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Etude in E minor, opus 25, number 5. So, another study, another exercise, uh, which goal is to improve pianist's technique, to improve something uh, in playing of young artist. What this we will of course talk tonight, uh, but here I would like to make a little exception. As you know, for now we always focused at first on the difficulties and I showed you what is difficult and I showed you uh, how to practice a little and uh, then after that we focused on the analysis of the construction and, and the music. Uh, with this etude uh, I have to do it a little differently. There must be always an exception of some rules, right? So, um, because um, in this etude we have so many different difficulties depending on where we are, uh, that if I start to talk only about them it will be very confusing. So I think we can do it simultaneously. So we will be going through the etude, uh, to, uh, we will reveal the beauty of the construction of this piece because it's extremely beautiful um, and different from all the previous etudes as well. And also we will focus on the difficulties. So. I would like to open with um, um, the statement that this attitude is, like you know, we have in advertisements very often, two in one. This is two in one. You should buy and then you, you pay for one, but you get two. <laughs> there are two attitudes in one attitude, my friends. Two different kind of attitudes for different difficulties, but in the end, this mixture uh, became a scherzo. A scherzo, you know, Chopin with this attitude is proving that he actually can compose a real scherzo. The scherzo that Beethoven composed in his sonatas, in his symphonies, that the tradition of the scherzo uh, as a piece A, B, A or 3, 4 in a very fast tempo, very joking, light with the trio middle part slower. That's exactly how this etude is. So this is the only really <laughs> scherzo um, written by Chopin, but <laughs> apparently he called it an etude. Uh, okay, so uh, let's start the analysis of the construction and difficulties at the same time. Now I play for you the first part of this etude, part A, and I want you to listen carefully and tell me what is the construction uh, of this music. Uh, what parts can we divide this music uh, to? So, let's start. first etude, as I said, two in one. What was the construction? The construction was A, B, A. Um, so part A was this one. And then we 
have part B. The difficulties. So, first of all, it's a little confusing because what we actually hear, we hear always some wrong note as if a pianist is constantly making a mistake, like you know. But that's how it is written. It's a, it's a joke, you know. Um, so we we have this melody. the right pinky uh, finger but in the same hand in down we have this and the first note is out of tune only the second note is good so in fact it should be like this sounds so nice but we have this wrong note so this is a tune that um, imitate an out of tune piano <laughs> that's how I'm always joking but seriously now what's difficult well difficult it is very difficult to play on out of tune piano because if we have good ear we can't stand it you know it's very hard but what really is uncomfortable in this attitude is the fact that the right hand has to play a little bit wide so we need to have big hand or very supple fingers supple hand just lo look how it's and at the same time we need to hear the top voice so the pinky very weak finger right So when we start to learn this attitude, usually we feel pain in the hand. And there is not so much to do about it because we just need to make it bigger. So it takes time. After some time, the pain disappears. What about the left hand? Left hand has a very wide broken chords. Uh, which also are not that easy. And usually when we play it wrongly, it sounds like this. The, the thumb is the hero, which is wrong. Because we need the bass, so the pinky again. So two pinkies are the most important in this attitude. That's how it should sound, my friends, look. Very different, right? Okay, so that's the first difficulty and that's the first part um, of the etude. And now a very short analysis of the structure. So we have uh, regular phrases. For the first sentence sounds like this. The second sentence, the consequent phrase, is exactly the same, but the left hand has a little bit different accompaniment. It makes it more difficult to coordinate those two hands. So. And then we have part B. Part B is very funny. I mean, all the piece is funny, because Chopin writes here, please play scherzando, which means joking and leggero, which means light. Coming back to part B. Part B has a very funny moment. We have the dialogue in the right hand, listen. First person. And second. <laughs> and 
and, and the second is out of tune. The first is in tune, the second is out of tune. And uh, Chopin is adding here a very important motif of one note repeated many times. One, two, three, four, and then with the short wrong note four times and all together sounds like this. another difficulty another difficulty in the right hand we go back to part a so to the beginning of the piece but this time we have to play everything legato using fingers so look at how uncomfortable this is we have to change fingers you know And then after that we have this this very famous jumps. This this moment. When left hand is jumping on the left side, the right hand on the right. I managed to play clean 10 times in a row. Well, that's a success. Well, of course, the, the finger has to go here and has to reach this note, always the same note. And that's not easy. And we have three jumps like this. Very often here, uh, pianists uh, slow down. They slow down and they play it beautifully. And we know, I have nothing against it. But Chopin doesn't write anything. So, in fact, when we look at the score, we should have Three times, pa -bam! Pa -bam! Pa -bam! That's exactly how it ends. Forte, no piano, everything forte, everything fast, everything fast. So, um, of the first etude. That's the, that's the end of the par of part big part A. Then we have part B. What construction part B has? had its own construction, ABA. Now this part also has its own construction. That's why I was joking that it's two in one. And the difficulties which we have in this middle part are completely different 
that we had in the first part. This melody is so touching, but you know that this melody comes from the folk Polish melody which Chopin's mother uh, sang to him when he was a baby. And he always um, recalled this melody when he missed Poland. He was improvising on that. Later, um, a few years before he died, he wrote his testament piece, which is called a Polonese fantasy. And he put this melody in the middle part of Polonese fantasy. Do you know? <laughs> Where does it come from? It comes from this folk melody which Chopin also used in his fantasy on Polish themes, Opus 13. This fantasy, uh, I mean in original this theme sounds like this. gorgeous it's it's not the same but it is the same and this is the genius of Chopin and his quotations he quoted many times well not many times but he quoted sometimes a few other music other pieces by himself or folk but it was never literally and so is here but the first difficulty uh, which we have is the one that you know it was very famous, especially in the... Um, there was a pianist called Sigismund Thalberg. He was... he considered himself the greatest pianist in Europe. And he competed even with Liszt and he was very high nose pianist. He was an artist. He was a star, you know, a star. The best. And he had this technique that he invented uh, that it was called like well the well the free hands pl way of playing so as if the pianist has free hands uh, the bass there was a one hand left hand then in the middle there was a melody and in the right hand we had the very virtuoso spectacular you know uh, fantastic passages arpeggios. Here we have Chopin who is paraphrasing, well, who is, yeah, who is paraphrasing this kind of technique, but in his way. So which way? Poetic way. He didn't care about virtuoso, you know, showing off. He wrote with this piece, which is not easy, because we need to work on this even evenness of the arpeggios. The arpeggios are not easy because we have not only one note, we have one note, two notes, one note, two notes. There is also a double, there is also a double, listen. And to play it evenly, to play it well, we need to have supple wrists as well. Uh, because we have to always care about how we touch every note on this passage. I recommend to play this passage uh, not so much finger legato, more kind of like non legato or staccato, but we feather, then we achieve a perfect evenness. Like this. Uh, 
So if you touch it the same way, you will achieve the, the beautiful even legato with the pedal. But the most important thing is, of course, the melody. So now listen, this is all like the Th Thalberg's music. We have the melody. <laughs> This melody is played by two hands, sometimes right, sometimes left. Okay, the analysis of structure. The first antecedent phrase. a little bit drama just like in every perfect piece of music we need to have a climax so here we also have we will now be building up the climax just listen it will be building up slowly it it's like something is growing very slowly <laughs> and there is a new difficulty uh, while well, jumping with hands and uh, the uh, right hand has a very has to play very wide even wider chords well double notes just look I hope you can see my hands <laughs> different because at, at the beginning we had triplets in the uh, arpeggio one two three 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 now we have four one two three four one two three four one two three four so a little bit diff more difficult comes where this melody comes from because we have the bass we have the, the the arpeggios and where is this third hand you know very beautiful moment <laughs> musician or if you never saw the score before in your life you probably think it's the same as in the beginning um, because it sounds the same <laughs> right? but unfortunately not my friends here Chopin uh, is very wicked very wicked very evil you know he wants to show all of us that we are not that good <laughs> if you managed to play until now now you have a really a problem the space between those fingers and those fingers and those fingers is stretched we have to stretch our fingers to the maximum we feel pain in the hand it's extremely uncomfortable and it doesn't sound well because we need to really play pinky the most it's look how uncomfortable it is written we have three notes instead of two notes at the beginning we got only two now we have three of them It's very uncomfortable, but yet the pianist has to play it and has to um, fake 
and try to sh show the audience that he's enjoying what he's doing. Whereas in, in, in reality, he's stretching the fingers. Well, of course, at the beginning, because when we practice it longer, 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 the hand is improving because that's an exercise, right? Every exercise must be painful a little, even the physical exercise. So let's listen to this part A. <laughs> Second phrase. And part B with the dialogue and with the one note repeated. And again we got angry and again we have the jump. And we should have part A again, right? Because A, B, A. But we don't have it anymore. Instead, we have something new, but something incredible. It's not really new, because we have the apotheosis of the wrong note, if I can say so. If it seems like the pianist tries to, now I prove you, I can play this note clean. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! So this is the first thing I'm thinking of. But also it sounds a little bit like a mazurka, you know? The beginning of the mazurka. Something like that. Anyway, it is very mazurka-like ending, but also this no, repeated notes, they come from uh, part A, I mean the first etude in this, uh, when we had the dialogue. Do you remember? So this is exactly the same. And this, so, this way Chopin is by opening up the whole piano. Oh. Open up the whole piano. I love this ending. I think it's the best ending uh, of all the etudes. Absolutely. So, to conclude, we have two in one, a scherzo, um, a very charming, not easy, uh, very uncomfortable to play etude um, with a beautiful folk melody in the middle part and is um, constructed in a very beautiful way. Let's have fun and listen to it one more time. Bar. 
the coda. Thank you very much and see you again in my next episodes. Bye bye.